You can absolutely make this point and click scene in GB Studio and let me show you how. I'm Jelly Tempo and I'm a pixel artist following down the pixel art indie game dev pipeline. In this point and click scene, the player will choose between three options, but only one option is correct. And the player advances to the next scene by choosing the correct option and checking it. First thing that we'll be doing in GB Studio is in the game world window, we're going to be creating a new scene. Um, you can rename it to whatever you'd like. I'm renaming mine to point and click and you can change the type to point and click because that's the type of scene we'll be making. Under background, you'll see art. Um, you can find the art that you want to upload in the images window. I have already gone ahead and uploaded the mock-up of the art that I would like to use. And you can upload your art in that gray panel of the images window. So now we're going to be clicking on that art that we just uploaded in the underneath background of the point and click scene. My mini game will be giving a correct flower of three flowers to a butterfly. To set these choices up, we'll need to add an event to the main scene and the event we are looking for specifically is set variable to value. We specifically want to add a global variable to this for this part and I'm choosing global variable two and we're gonna leave the value at zero. Now we'll be creating four triggers in the main scene. Three will be for the choices. For me, those are the flowers. Um, and the last will be the checker, which is the butterfly for me. Um, and you can add triggers by adding um, or using the plus button and going to trigger or selecting trigger. We'll want to do this next step with our correct choice. So um, click over the trigger that is over the correct choice. For me, that's the middle flower. And we're going to add an event to this trigger called set variable to value. And we are going to set the that previously used global variable to the value of one. We're gonna repeat these same steps with the incorrect choices, except we're going to set the variable to two, which is a different value than the correct choice value, which is one. So now we'll have three values that a player could have. Zero, which is if they haven't selected anything, one if they've made the correct choice, and two if they've made an incorrect choice. And with all of these pieces, we are going to, in a piecemeal way, set up a very large if statement. And I'm going to be doing this in a kind of janky order. The only thing that's important is just how the if statement looks at the end though. This if statement is ultimately going to go under um, the checkers trigger. So I'm going to right now click on the trigger of that checker and we are going to put in that if statement by adding an event. Under condition, we are going to set that global variable you used to um, the value one. Within true, we are going to add the event display dialog and write good job so that the player knows that they've selected the correct choice. Yeah, um, remember the correct value for the player is one based on the things that we've done so far. Um, so separately under the checker, create another display dialog event and type the text you want the incorrect choices to display. So I'm writing not quite. So the not quite is for incorrect choices. And now we are going to be checking if the player has made a choice at all. So add an event, if variable compare with value and um, select under condition the global variable we've been using and leave the value at zero because remember this means the player hasn't chosen anything and that's the original value. Um, under true we're going to display dialog and I'm going to prompt the player to choose an option. Now we need to put it all together and you'll watch me struggle just a tad. Um, we want to put the not quite incorrect choice dialog event within the else part of the if statement under the um, correct choice. And again, we're going to be putting the display not quite, so that's if 
um, the player has chosen something incorrect within the else part of the if statement. Um, so that'll go underneath the dialogue display good job or whatever you chose. Now, once that's all the way done, we are going to put that part, the good job, right? So that's an if statement if the player has chosen anything at all. We're going to put that part of the if statement underneath the else part if the player hasn't chosen anything at all and that's the dialogue choose an option. So you'll see me drag it and underneath the else part and you'll know you've done it correctly when the if statement changes color. That looks about right to me. So I am going to check and see if things are working in my favor. Um, but I'm only going to do this after I change um, where the game starts from. So I want the game to start at this scene. So I'm not just wasting time. So I'm going to do that by moving that red arrow. I'm going to make it look a little bit prettier by putting in a sprite that I've already previously uploaded a hand cursor for this part. And I'm going to run it. Um, and um, I'm going to test my choices. Let's see if it works. So that's before I've chosen anything. This is after choosing an incorrect flower. And if it works after choosing the correct flower, we are good. Awesome. And I hope um, your click and point uh, scene is work or point and click scene is working well too. Feel free to like leave a comment if it's not. And I, this is a tiny channel. I'll be able to help. <laughs> okay. So now let's make our um, art much prettier than this. We want someone to actually play our game, right? So I have a finished, um, I have a finished uh, background um, scene, or I have a finished background for this that I've already done. And we're gonna snazz it up by making a pseudo drag and drop function. So, or just a dragging function. So we're under every trigger, we are going to add a unique sprite. Um, and we're gonna add an event under each of these triggers called set player sprite sheet. And we're going to add a unique sprite to each of the triggers so the player knows what choice that they are currently on or which one that they've um, chosen. So I made like small um, cursors that um, display um, a miniature version of the flower that the player has chosen. So that is the small first incorrect choice. Um, this is a small, uh, the second incorrect choice, and now this is the correct one, and it's just a tiny version of um, Baby's Breath. I would love to see the scenes you've created if you have an itch.io and want to drop your creator name. I have a blog also where I post resources and tutorials, so keep in contact by subscribing and checking out my blog. Happy developing!